in the vibrant city of Hong Kong, there are countless elements that make it truly unique. From spaces to its traditional buildings, this city is a treasure trove of culture and history. But sadly, in the fast-paced world we live in, many of these elements may no longer exist in just ten short years. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Hong, and I'm Monique. Today we are going to talk about a common sight in Hong Kong that is both practical and sustainable, but that is going to vanish: the traditional Hong Kong drying rack. The Hong Kong drying rack, also known as the bamboo pole or bamboo scaffold, is a clever solution to the challenge of drying clothes and other items in a densely populated urban environment where space is limited. The rack consists of two long bamboo poles that are supported by the metal brackets and several horizontal bamboo slats that can be used to hang clothes and other items for drying. The poles are typically hung outside the apartments, windows, or on rooftops, creating a unique virtual landscape in the city. But the Hong Kong drying racks is more than just a way to dry clothes. It's also a symbol of sustainability, as it uses natural materials that are renewable and biodegradable. And by hanging clothes to dry instead of using a dryer, people can save energy and reduce their carbon footprint. So, Mo Lake, why is it vanishing? How do we know that it will no longer exist in the near future? Good question, Hong. Hong Kong is notoriously known for its nano apartments, where storage space is very limited. Finding room for essentials is a challenge, let alone accommodating for a laundry rack. For that reason, drying racks have been expanded towards the outsides of apartment windows. However, there has been a steep decline in the appearance of these drying racks due to many factors, which we will discuss together. One key reason is Hong Kong's rapid urbanization and modernization, where older and more traditional buildings are torn down to make way for modern skyscrapers and complexes. Additionally, advancements in technologies have led to the replacement of tedious clothing hanging tasks with the convenience of drying machines. Other factors include health and safety concerns. There have been instances of drying racks collapsing, posing fatal risk to residents and pedestrians below, as well as issues of water dripping that raise concerns about community awareness and the image of the city. So, Hong, what do we know about its past and present? For example, what purposes does it serve? Yeah, good questions. Public housing close drying facilities have long been criticized. Prior to 2005. Most of the older public housing estates used the three incense sticks, pole-style drying rack, which required residents to lay out of windows to hang their clothes. This led to tragic accidents where individuals lost their balance and fell to their deaths. In response to this issue, the housing department has implemented three replacement programs for drying racks over the past decade. However, Each improved versions of the drying racks introduced has faced criticisms, with some public housing residents claiming that the facilities are impractical. As a result, residents still struggle with the issues of clothes drying on a daily basis. Oh, that is very tragic. In 2004, the housing department subsidized residents to replace their drying racks. However, Residents were required to pay 200 Hong Kong dollars for the arrangement of stainless steel drying racks installed by appointed contractors. This measure received mixed response from residents, and the program had an overall negative response, resulting in the replacements of only 40,000 drying racks. Ten years later, in 2014. The housing department allocated 500 million Hong Kong dollars for the voluntary replacement program, providing free installation of drying racks on the external walls of living rooms. However, these racks faced similar criticism, as they could only hold four pieces of clothing, and were installed outside the kitchen windows, making them liable to cooking flames. 
Consequently, many residents abandoned these racks. This led many residents to install closed drying posts in their living rooms at their own expense, which might not comply with safety regulations. In 2017, the Housing Department allocated nearly 400 million Hong Kong dollars to install a unified closed drying post system in approximately 300,000 units. Unfortunately, the design received negative feedback again. The expenditure of public funds fails to meet the needs of residents. That is really interesting. I have also been doing some research on the drying rack regulations and found a disturbing news report. Apparently, in 2022, a 66 year old woman in Hallman Tin was hanging clothes onto the laundry rack outside the window, slipped, and fell through the window from her home on the fifth floor. Wow, this is very sad to hear. So, Monique, who will be affected when it no longer exists? What are their feelings and attitude towards this? Thank you for the question. For many long-time residents, the tradition of drying racks exists beyond its functionality. Instead, it has been ingrained within their everyday life, ultimately contributing to a sense of belonging and identity. The disappearance of drying hangers due to urbanism and modernization contributes to the sense of placelessness. This will drastically change the economy as Hong Kong's urban landscape becomes increasingly homogenized losing its sense of place and therefore influencing businesses as well as tourism. So, what is being done about its impending disappearance? A very good question. What actions we can take regarding the imminent disappearance of the closed drain rack? I will summarize it into three aspects. The first is to promote more public awareness and understanding of the history and cultural significance of closed drain racks in education. Understanding the history and importance of traditional drying racks can help us uncover the face of old Hong Kong. And then, understanding the daily routines of the general public in the late 50s or the late 60s, as well as their living habits such as clothing, food, housing and transportation. This knowledge can be passed on to our descendants ensuring that they know that the bustling sense of Hong Kong originated from the step-by-step -step constructions of the old people. The second is to record its appearance, usage methods and structure. Because it is impossible to continue retaining the drain rack, which is limited by Hong Kong's legislative policy. Traditional drain racks will gradually disappear from our sight, but we can use photos, videos, and written descriptions to record this historical data and share it with others. This way, it can be passed down from generation to generation in another form. The third is to visit other places or countries to reminisce about the design of this clothes drying rack. Because in some areas of China, such as Longgang district in Shenzhen and Taiwan province. Traditional drying racks continue to be preserved, and those three incense designed drying racks have also appeared in present day like Asia, like in Singapore, Malaysia, and other places. In this way, our next generation can still continue to learn about the design of clove drying racks. And through visiting other places, we can recall and savor the scenery of Hong Kong's old era. Indeed, Hong Kong is a city full of vitality, with countless different elements, colors, political spectra, and uniqueness, constantly filled with a rapidly changing rhythm. But under this ever-changing city, what will no longer exist in just 10 years? What can we keep? What new challenges will Hong Kong face? We don't know. Perhaps this can only wait for us to slowly adjust in the future.